Hello, it's Teacher Carrie here, and I'm back with another Minicam tutorial. Today, I want to take you through your widget menus and show you how you can navigate them as you're teaching on Minicam. I'm a VIP kid teacher. I've been with them for six contracts, and I've taught around 4,500 classes. But no, VIP kid and Minicam have not decided to sponsor this video, so hashtag not sponsored, and let's get started. First, I just want to give you a quick tour of our Minicam tutorial screen. Down below my video feed, you can see my video preset boxes. And off to the right hand side, this is our main Minicam menu. And these little icons are called widgets. If you hover over them, you can see the name of each widget, which is really helpful. The top one is just called presets. From here, you can do some things to manage your video feeds. So if I were to click into my video preset number one, it will change my screen to that. And if I click back to my preset number eight, here's our tutorial screen again. And you can see that there are some locking and unlocking features. This is helpful if you plan on moving things around the screen. You always wanna make sure that your background layer is locked particularly if you're using a green screen because you don't want this background behind you to shift around as you are moving effects on the screen. And you can also just delete a layer from your preset um, if it's something that you're not using anymore. The next widget down is audio. From here you can manage your audio settings to um, change your input and output. If you plan on recording videos with Minicam, you are going to want to select your whatever microphone you're using and maybe the system sound from your computer. And then to play it back, just choose the right device that you want to listen on. And of course you can shift things around. Um, there's a noise suppression feature, which is really great. So right now in my physical classroom, I actually have a fan running and I'm hoping that you won't be able to hear it on this video because I have my noise suppression turned all the way up. And you can also do some audio monitoring to listen to the sounds from your microphone and test that they're working well. But you can always look in the lower right hand corner for your audio as well to make sure that your microphone is working perfectly. And for VIP Kid, I just usually select my regular microphone and I don't actually need this system sound unless I want to show a video or play a song for my students to listen to. Next on our widget menu is the draw and text feature. This is really helpful in class. You can write on your video screen or you can type messages to the students. So I often use this preset here just as a way for me to write messages hi, <laughs> that my students can read back to me in class. So that's very helpful. Um, you want to make sure that when you're using these features, you have slid your on and off button for each one so that they will function correctly in class. This is your selecting tool. This is just a pointer. And then if you want a pencil, be sure to click this little pencil box here. There is a little drop down where you can make it larger there, or you can just use this slider to make it larger this way. And of course you can change the color and you can even add a few shapes if you're interested. But I mostly just use this text box. Students don't wanna see my particular handwriting. <laughs> Next down on our widget menu is the time. You can add a clock to your video feed. You can have a stopwatch to count up and you can have a timer to count down. Of course, with all of these, you wanna make sure that you have slid your little button from on and off um, to make them visible on the screen and you can change the formatting and colors of each one. So this is really helpful if you have a welcome preset or slide, if you wanna call it that, before your classes start. Um, I'll show you mine. And I just have a little timer there so that my students can see exactly when class will start. And next down on our menu here is our virtual backgrounds. And as you can see, I am using a green screen today and there's a little bit of fuzziness right here. So with this virtual backgrounds, I could go in and fix that little bit of fuzziness. 
<laughs> now, for me, I have noticed that when I'm teaching, um, I will get all of my green screen area selected away. There won't be any fuzziness happening. But if I click the record button in Minicam, occasionally I have to go back and touch up those little green screen areas. I'm not sure if it's just different processing that is needed for a video versus just using it in class. But be aware of that. If you're having any issues with your green screen, be sure to check out my video called five keys to success with a green screen to help get you started and this my favorite trick is just to click a different widget and then click on your virtual backgrounds and that will bring up your little dropper so that you can fix any fuzzies on your screen and next down in our widget menu is called lower thirds now these are usually used in like news shows some movies and things like that to display titles across the bottom or lower third <laughs> of your video preset. Now I don't prefer to use these in class. I use the text feature when I want to add my name um, to my video feed because these often come up a little too high for me. I like to have quite a lot of space over my head in case I want any of my effects to be moving above me. But if you were sitting up closer to the top of your video frame, you might choose to use a lower third to display your name or maybe to write a sentence to your student, something like that. And next down is our effects menu. This effects menu is probably going to be the widget option that you choose the most in order to add graphics and effects to your video feed. I have mine set up backwards from what you might have because I have selected to have my video folders or my effects folders at the bottom and my selected effects at the top. But you can just change them by grabbing and pulling them down whichever direction you want them to be. And of course it's not doing that right now for me. Oh, there we go. Because I'm trying to show you, right? So here again, this just shows that you have your effects widget selected. And if you had clicked into maybe your face mask, you could go back to your main effects by just tapping on that. Here are your favorited effects. So if you find an effect that you want to use all the time, for example, maybe this letter A, <laughs> and you click on that, then you can add this little heart here to make it in your favorite section. I don't really use a lot of favorites because I often just use this little search feature here and that will search all of my folders if I have it set to showing all of my folders in my little effects folders menu here. So if I search for something, let's say I want a hat, then they all come up here and of course I can shrink it down and maybe put it on my head. So this is what I mean by showing things above my head in my effects um, and why I sit a little bit more towards the center of the frame, just in case I want to do something like that. And then as you can see here, it's popping those effects that I've selected down into the selected effects menu here. And I can just click this little eyeball to hide or unhide them as I need them. And if I'm done with that effect for the moment, but I want to maybe use it in a later class, I can just click this little X to get rid of them for now. And if I don't like the effect at all, I think this hat is terrible and ugly, I can just select the X right here in this uh, folders view, and that it will permanently delete that effect. Now I cannot find that ugly hat anymore. And when I'm ready to go back to my folders, I just want to click this little back arrow there. And then there are a few other options here. This button adds a folder. So if you want to organize things based on your um, topic or the level that you're teaching or maybe the unit that you're teaching, you can just add yourself some folders that way. This button will add effects from your computer. So if you've done some Google searching and found a lot of PNGs or sticker GIFs or just regular GIFs that you want to use in Minicam, save them to your computer and pressing this button will bring up your selection of computer items. Um, so your downloads or pictures or wherever you might have saved it so that you can find it that way. 
And then this download button will download effects directly from Minicam, which is super helpful. You know that all of the images that is there are going to be royalty free and easy to use. Um, I do find that they tend to be static images rather than GIFs, and I tend to prefer to use a GIF with my students. Anything that moves to catch their attention is really great for me, um, but you can check out that download from Min uh, Minicam to see if you find anything that you like. And then we come to the gallery. This is where you can see any videos that you have recorded using Minicam. And the last option is favorites. Above each one of these little features here, I have selected this favorite button. So for example, if I go back to drawing, right here, this little yellow is showing that I have selected that as a favorite. And if I unclick it, now it's not yellow anymore, it will have taken it off of my favorites there. And for me, the ones I use the most are text, draw, and virtual backgrounds. And then you do need to still use this separate effects widget to do all of your effects in class. Now, because Minicam is just managing your video feed before it gets to whatever platform you're using, like Skype or Zoom or VIP Kid, you do need to have your Minicam window open while you are teaching um, on whatever platform that you use. So check out my video to, that shows the layout of my computer screen if you need to know how to position your Minicam menu on your computer desktop as you teach. But I hope this little tour was helpful to you. Let me know if you have any questions. And of course, check out the links in the description for more information. Have a great day. Bye.